You want to make games. I'm no psychic. Of course you do. That's why you're watching this video. We'll open your eyes and get ready. It's going to be pretty hard. Especially for those ADH years. This is a whole six minute video. I promise you that you will understand how to take your idea to an actual prop that you can put into an engine by the end of this video. There's one really important thing you have to do before starting. Is gathering a reference. Even if your brain thinks you know what it looks like, it probably doesn't. So as many pretty pictures as you can put on one board. That's the best idea you got. Go for it. Step one is finding your modeling software and getting good. I use Maya here. You need to put hours, days, years, decades even. Maybe not decades. Just put a lot of time into getting good at the modeling software and you'll be okay. Making sure that those gray boxes kind of look like what you want them to look like. Without having to go anywhere else. Step 1A. Now I know what you're thinking, Josh. That's four steps. You're lying. How could you lie to us? Well, calm down. It's not part of every workflow. You don't need it to be in everything. You can do low poly modeling. You don't even need this step. So really three steps. You can skip this if you want to. But sculpting adds more geometry, more information for your render to understand how the light should bounce around. It gives you more information for your texturing. And it's kind of part of the whole making a game prop workflow. Understanding how to go from high to low is pretty important in this whole thing. So if you see here, it's kind of adding more texture to it. Whereas you can't really do that in the 3D modeling software. I think you're able to do it in Blender, but it's not as advanced just yet as this ZBrush program you can see here. This next step is like another mini step. It's not really gonna be part of every single workflow, but it's part of most, I wanna say. It's gonna be retopology. What I have here is a simple prop. It's not too overly complicated, so I don't have to actually retopologize the whole thing. I kinda just add more geometry to these simple meshes that I've put here and kinda fit it into what I sculpted so that when we take it into the texturing software, it'll be able to bake better. What I do here now is I add a wood grain texture with arrows to kind of show me the flow of how the wood grain is going to be going from left to right just to make sure that all the directionals make sense so that the wood isn't going up and down when they shouldn't be. Kind of makes sense for what the texture is, right? It's like wood. It should be pretty easy to understand. And the wood texture allows me to take these UV maps that I've made here on the right hand side and kind of orientate them and flip them in the right direction. These are really just like UV shells that have been like cut and placed so that the texture kind of follows the way it's supposed to be so that you don't have all the texture in one thing and that every face is accounted for in the software. We did it! Yay, we made it to texturing, which is the second to last step. We're basically done with the prop. The texturing process is really fun. It's one of my favorite parts of the two. It's kind of like a little coloring book. You kind of just make things look how you want them to look. And a prop can be designed so many different ways depending on the use case, the scene, the scenario. You can actually take other props and repurpose them in the texturing. The final and last step of this whole process that you've been following along with is taking your prop along with all the textures that we've made and throwing it into a render engine. My render engine of choice is going to be Unreal Engine. I use this one because that is going to be my end goal is throwing my prop, my completed prop into a game engine and using it in games.